Hi everybody, this will be a video tutorial series of how to export 3D models with textures from Maya into Unreal. Uh, we're going to take it uh, one step at a time, so we'll have several parts here. This first part will be about uh, the overall setup and then how to export from Maya. Um, so the, this is Unreal. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently using Unreal 4.24. I was going to show you what the final output could look like, uh, two options for how you can get things into Unreal. Then we will come back and talk about the export process. Um, in the next video, I'll come back and I'll discuss the overall UI and navigation in Unreal. So this is Unreal, and if I hit the play button, uh, this is a third-person template. Uh, so the third-person character, the WASD move, uh, spacebar to jump and mouse to look around it is already set up for you as a template. Um, we'll come back and talk about how to do that. What I've done is I've imported in my environment scene here uh, and <clears throat> adjusted some lighting, add some custom lights from my little light poles, um, and uh, made sure all of my materials and textures load in properly. Uh, so you can see everything should look pretty close to the way it does in Maya. The lighting actually looks better. Uh, and we'll talk about how this process works. Uh, there really is two different ways we can export and then import into Unreal. We can import uh, the entire scene as one FBX file, so one general 3D file. Uh, that combines everything into one mesh. <clears throat> or we can export individual parts. Uh, so like the wall piece, sidewalk, uh, road, and then a window door frame. Um, so my entire building here is modular in setup so uh, what we can do is export all of our pieces and then build our environment in Unreal and that's really for more of a level design standpoint of uh, the more accurate and proper way to import into Unreal. <clears throat> a quicker and easier way to do this is to save or export from Maya all of your models as one mesh so that way uh, it's one object you have to manage and deal with within Unreal. It does have its qualms, so one thing I will have to adjust is the way the lighting is set up. I cannot do static lighting uh, because there's a lot of overlapping UVs and there will be some shading issues. So one thing I have to do, if I import everything as one mesh like what I've done here, uh, then I need to change my lighting to dynamic lighting, all dynamic or movable lighting. Um, the other thing is when I do this all together, I have to set up um, collisions for everything uh, and it can cause some minor issues uh, and take more time to set up collisions as I move over here. I've set up some basic collisions which I'll get back to later. Show you those basic collisions as well. Um, but you will have to set up collisions for all the individual parts if you export everything as one mesh. Uh, if you do it individually it's a lot easier to set up collisions uh, and more accurate to set up collisions individually but it will require you to reset up your uh, environment in Unreal, uh, but I'll go back through that process as well. So this is Unreal. Um, I've set up my project. It's a new project. In the next video, we'll come back and talk about how to um, actually set up the project as well in, in a later video. <clears throat> um, from Maya, here's all of my meshes, and they are right now individual. So what we're gonna do is combine them all together and export them, I'll show you the two methods. So the first one is we're gonna take all of our parts, our environment position where we want it to, to look like the environment that you have in mind. We're gonna take all of these pieces and combine them together. Now what I would suggest you doing is saving this out as a separate file. Uh, so if you go into File, Save As, um, let's say uh, Combined for Unreal. So that way we can go back to our previous file in case we uh, want to uncombine these or whatnot. So that's a good thing to do to start off with is to save a file as a separate file in case something happens that we don't want to, to save in our general file. For levels on standpoint, we would want to export out individual parts. So that's the second method that I'll show. So this first method, uh, we need to select all of our objects. And I do have them in groups, uh, but our group is not going to matter because I'm going to combine everything together. So I'm going to select all of my objects for my environment. And in the modeling toolkit, I'm going to go to combine. So I have a lot of objects so that might take a second uh, for it to do that. Um, 
I have some history, so let's go ahead and rename that object. So now we have, we call this a mod props combined. Um, so whenever I combine doing some other modeling techniques, I need to delete the history. So two things I need to do before I export into a game engine is delete the history and freeze the transforms. Um, so let's go first to edit delete by type in history. That clears the connection from this object to any of the groups or anything else that might be set up. So what it means now is I have all these other groups. I can delete those out. I don't need them anymore. And here is my modular props combined object. Um, one of the thing that's good to note is that when we export, uh, wherever the pivot point is, that's where or how we're going to be able to move it around in Unreal. So what will probably be good is if I come in here with the D key, D is uh, change the pivot point, and let's hold down V to snap to point, and I'm going to, let's snap this to this bottom right corner point over here. So that moves the pivot point to this bottom corner. So whenever we're exporting to a game engine, we want to make sure that we know where the pivot point is, because this is much more difficult to permanently adjust the pivot point in a game engine. So before I uh, freeze the transforms, I need to move the pivot point to where I want the pivot point to be. And then I'm going to hold down the X key, that's snap to grid. So X, snap to grid, V, snap to point. So if I hold down the X key and click and drag, I want to snap this to the center of the grid. So that way when I import this into Unreal, it's going to know that this object should be in the center of the grid from this point of view. So before we export, we want to delete the history. Uh, in this particular occasion, we also um, uh, combined everything together and then move the pivot point to where we want the pivot point to be from the game engine standpoint. And then hold down X and snap to the grid. Okay, so move it to the center of the grid in the perspective view. All right, so the next thing uh, we need to do is we've made some adjustments to the transform nodes and we don't want to have those as we go into the engine. Uh, so let's do modify freeze transformations. What that will do is zero out the translate and rotates and put a value of one for the scale. So as if this object is a base primitive now. So technically we're ready to export uh, with this object. One thing I do want to mention next is that uh, Maya's unit setup is much smaller than Unreal's unit setup, so we're going to need to do some upscaling. We can do that in one of two ways. We can do the upscaling or try to start to do the upscaling in Maya, or we can wait until we get into Unreal. Unreal is about a 10 times uh, scale increase compared to what Maya is. I know my project is going to require a little bit more than that, uh, but Let's go ahead and as a good kind of default rule, I'm going to increase the scale from 1 to 10 in the scale X, Y, and Z. So that's going to make my uh, object, which is my environment, much larger. Okay, so if you look at the size of the grid, uh, as we go to a game engine like Unreal, we're going to make sure that we increase the scale either from Maya or in Unreal. So an increase of 10 is a good start. You may need to make your adjustment depending on how large your scene was to begin with. So increase the scale to 10 and we've changed our transform. So we actually need to go back and do modify freeze transformations as well. So we'll do that again. Now we're ready to export our combined scene out. Before I do that, I wanted to show my materials. So even though I have one object, I have really a lot of materials in here, and that's fine. Um, as long as your materials are set up, so I have a you know, 20 materials or something like that. As long as you have your different materials set up and applied to your parts of your scene before you export, uh, when you export an FBX file, it's going to save out that material with it as well. So once we get into Unreal, it's going to pull in those materials. Now one thing it will not do is pull in the texture connection to the materials. We'll have to manually do that, uh, but what we need is, especially if we combine our scene as one object, we need our separate materials to go with our model. So set up your materials, apply your materials to your parts of your scene, then combine everything, delete the history, move the pivot point where you want that to be, move the object with the pivot point to the center of the grid, 
uh, scale up your object to a value about 10 times the size. So if you put 10 instead of one for the scale X, Y, and Z, and then freeze the transforms. Then we're ready to export. So this is method one, exporting out the entire scene as one object. Combine everything together and then we'll export. So with that object selected, we're gonna go to File, Export Selection. Uh, I have other objects, so I never choose Export All. File, Export Selection. And I'm just gonna name it something different, so we'll say Mod Props um, Combined Export. I always put in like Export at the end, just to make sure. <clears throat> The only things that really matter when I export is that underneath the geometry tab, smoothing groups, smooth mesh, uh, and that should be it. Just make sure smoothing groups and smooth mesh is on. It doesn't increase in geometry, just make sure it keeps the hard and softened edges or what's called smoothing groups on. There are other things you can turn on and off, uh, but we will just want to make sure from the geometry tab, smoothing groups is turned on. So determine your location. So I have a modular set project folder. So I'm going to make sure I put my export file in there. And in files of type, uh, make sure you choose FBX. We could do OBJ, but FBX uh, does a better job of saving all of those materials and naming those materials, keeping the names for me. So I want to choose FBX export. I'm going to go ahead and click export selection. All right, so I did that uh, properly. If there's any warnings or errors, read those warnings and errors. Try to correct them. Google those warnings and errors if need be and find out ways to correct them. What I did want to mention is that file export selection, not export all. If you go to the files of type and you don't see FBX, it's just because the plugin is not turned on. So if I go to Windows, Settings of Preferences, and Plugin Manager, you may need to, especially if you're working from home, uh, turn on FBX. So we'll find FBX Maya. So if I scroll down in the Plugin Manager, fbxmaya.mll loaded and auto load should be checked and then you can click close and then in export selection fbx should be available should be one of the bottom two all right the second method is to actually export out individual parts so i've done this as uh, just an example here Let's see it's actually add this object to this group so right click with that object select and do add selected objects. Okay. Uh, so in this individual layer, uh, I have individual objects. I'm gonna move them apart so you can see them. I'm not gonna, uh, in this video, export out every individual part for my scene, but I have four of them to show you how we can do this. So what I would do from the uh, overall environment is instead of exporting as one mesh for the entire environment, I would export each individual different part. So I have a lot of parts here, uh, individual wall sections, doors, windows, columns, trash cans, uh, trash bags, railings, uh, a street lamp, uh, road, um, sidewalk pieces. So I've made this in a modular fashion so that everything can snap together. So one thing that I can do is it's better for a level design standpoint and can cause less issues and will also allow for static lighting to work properly um, is to instead export everything as individual objects. Um, so here's four parts, a wall, uh, a window that's on the bottom floor, sidewalk, and a street base. Um, so I've already put my pivot points where I want them to be so that everything will snap together, which is typically on the uh, this bottom right vertex. Um, so right vertex, right vertex. So once again, we want to make sure we select these. I've already deleted the history, but make sure we go edit, delete by type history. And then move the pivot point for each one. And then we want to snap the object, get out of pivot point mode, snap the object to the center of the grid for each one of these objects. I'm going to be exporting each one of these individually, so it's all right that they're overlapping right now. But I'm moving each one of my four sub pieces to the center of the grid. So I know I'm going to need an increase of about 10. So I'm going to select all four of those objects and increase the scale X, Y, and Z to 10. Okay, so everything is much larger. Okay. And then I'm going to select all these objects and go to Modify Freeze Transformations. So one thing I'm not going to do 
is combining any of these objects. I want to export these as individual forms. The Z fighting there is because I have my street base right on top of my sidewalk section there. All right, so this method, I'm going to come in here and select this wall window small. And anytime you are exporting, we want to make sure our objects are named properly. So that way, as it goes into the game engine, we know what's what. So wall half thick border, wall window small, street base, sidewalk straight. So we want to make sure our objects are named properly before we export. And then also in our material editor, we want to make sure we know what our materials are so that way we can connect everything properly. So make sure you name your objects and your materials. Now we're ready to export these parts as individual objects. Delete the history, move the pivot point where you want it to be, move the object to the center of the grid, scale up everything by 10, and then delete, or excuse me, uh, freeze the transforms. Last thing we want to do is select each individual part and go file export selection. Okay, so I already have some in here, so I'm just going to call this one wall window. Uh, what did I call it? Wall window small. We'll do underscore two. Okay, FBX. Make sure smooth and groups is turned on, and export selection. So I'm going to go to each one of these parts and export them individually. So this is the wall half thick border. I'm just going to do underscore two, uh, just because. I already have one named this. So we'll go street base, file export selection, underscore two, and then a sidewalk straight. So we'll do export selection, sidewalk straight, underscore two. Okay. All right. So from our folder standpoint, what we need to have ready before we start importing into Unreal are our FBX files. So the ones I just saved out are these five right here, my mod props combined export, my sidewalk straight individual, street base individual, wall half thick border individual, wall small window individual. Now I have a bunch more of parts, so you will have to export them out individually if you wanted to combine everything together in Unreal. Okay. So you will probably have a lot more individual FBXs uh, than just these four that I have. So we need the FBXs, Maya files cannot export into Unreal. Uh, and then the FBXs save the modeling and then the material setup, but it does not save the texture files. So you also need all of your texture files. I have some of them as JPEG and then others as PNG files. They need to be in the same location as the FBX files. So when we're ready to import into Unreal, we will import the FBX models and the texture maps into Unreal. Now we're ready to start importing into Unreal. All right, the next video we'll come back and discuss how to uh, set things up in Unreal. We'll do a brief demo on the UI in Unreal, uh, and then we will come back and do some uh, importing and material setup, lighting setup, uh, and the overall process of getting your environment into Unreal.